Greetings, I'm Art Fireman, and we are Projector Reviews TV. Now, the first thing to know about uh, the Epson Pro Cinema G6900 and its siblings is that they're not designed for a dedicated home theater or cave. This is a serious media room or living room type projector. And these are no entry level home entertainment projectors either. The Pro Cinema G6900 has an MSRP in the US of $6,499, which, considering its brightness and its feature set, is pretty reasonable. The Pro Cinema G6900 claims a massive 6,000 lumens. Like most projectors, it didn't hit this claim when we measured it, but it came close enough within 10%, which is visibly only the slightest of differences. It is a WUXGA projector. It's 1920 by 1200, slightly higher resolution than 1080p, so it can run 1080p at native. In this video, we're going to first discuss the types of room environments the G6900 can tackle. We'll mention some key features, view our video hardware tour of the projector, and when we return from that, we'll discuss some of those features, and then the conversation will turn to picture quality. Lots of images and video clips to show you what the G6900 projector can do, even in really tough rooms. The G6900 and its two Pro Cinema siblings are out to bring front projection to rooms in your home that otherwise were considered never viable for projectors. We're talking about rooms with windows that leak daylight, rooms with at least some lights on, rooms that have white or other bright surfaces. Most rooms are within the abilities of the G6900 projector when paired with the right projection screen. That's key. Sure, if you have a room that's pretty good, good lighting control and good shades on the windows, no problem at all, but the G6900 can handle far worse. The G6900 is ready to tackle many rooms that would make a typical home theater projector want to crawl under a rock and die. Let's run through some of the key features. 6,000 lumens, 5,000 to 1 contrast ratio with dynamic iris, Ferrugia image processing, CFI for smooth motion, super resolution for detail enhancement, that we'll touch on lamp light, filters, HD base T and SDI, uh, the exceptional warranty, the advanced networking features for home or business, remote control and menus. By the way, this is not a traditional 3D projector. And finally, of course, we'll talk about the picture quality. I should mention that in our new Dream Home project, which is a smarter home automation oriented uh, feature, we'll be installing the One Step Down G6550 into the project, along with the appropriate screen. Why not the G6900? Don't laugh. But this is going in the living room where there's a white ceiling and that G6550 is white, not black. The G6900 is designed first and foremost to be able to handle a lot of ambient light. This is a projector for the living room, the media room, the bonus room. You watch a lot of sports, like watching Blacklist, House of Cards, American Idol, with the family and with the lights on. If that sounds right, one of these G-series is uh, built for your world. Consider the G6900 therefore to be the best at sports and general TV viewing. Oh, movies are fine too, but with most movies, there's lots of dark scenes and ambient light compromises dark scenes, whether you have 600 or 6,000 lumens. Let's tour the hardware now and then go over some of those features from the bullet list earlier. Okay, it's time for a hardware tour of the Epson Powerlight Pro G6900 WU projector. First thing you notice is the uh, large lens in the front. This is the standard lens provided with the standard version. You can buy the projector without any lens and choose from any of the six as separate purchases. Okay, there's also the exhaust on the front left hand side here. And as we shift over to the right hand side, we have the infrared sensor for the remote control, or I should say the front one, and four indicator lamps. The usual power, we've got one for the lamp, one more for temperature in case it's overheating, and one other, which you probably will never see either, which is for changing the filter, which should last a decade or longer. Also of note is a single screw thread adjustable front foot. Now, as we move to uh, the top, you can make out two dials, one here and one here. The dial on the left is for your vertical lens shift, and there's a rather significant amount of it. The one on the right is for horizontal. Lock them in place with this little slide right here. Make sure they do not budge. Let's take a spin. And the first thing we see is on the side here is a door for changing that long life filter. Now, as we move on to the back, we find not only all the usual inputs and connectors, but also the projector's control panel. So let's start with the control panel. 
Uh, it has the usual power, once for on, two for off, source search or input, whatever you want to call that. We've got the menu button for the navigation and four arrow keys. Got those in a diamond configuration. Escape, which takes you back up a level in the menus, and the enter button. Far to the right, we have the AV mute. Now, each of these four arrow keys does something else when you're not in the menus. The top and bottom ones work with keystone correction and the more advanced uh, warping type features. Uh, the left one is uh, lets you lock out the control panel, and the one on the right brings up info. Now it's time to take a look at all the inputs and connectors, starting with a service port, top left there. Right below that, you'll notice some markings for Crestron, Ferruja, and HDBT, uh, three of the standards that they adhere to. Next to the service port, however, is the HDSDI. Uh, this allows you to run live video feeds such as 1080p from a camera uh, up to 250 plus feet. The uh, network connector, RJ45, is right next to that. And here's one for HD Base T or HDBT, which lets you run Cat 5, Cat 6 for long distances, uh, football field length. Okay, moving to the right, you'll find an HDMI input and a display port. And below that, one of the three audio inputs. Moving further to the left in the green, we have the old fashioned low resolution sources, S video, video, and a pair of audio inputs. Next over, an audio out to feed an external system, a monitor out to feed a local display, RS-232 for traditional serial command and control, and an extender if you need to hardwire your remote control because it's out of range. That leaves the blue section, and in the blue section we've got a standard analog computer input, the usual DB-15, two more audio inputs, and a component video set of five BNCs. The computer can also handle a component video signal. That's pretty much a wrap except for the power receptacle. And that concludes our tour of the Epson PowerLite Pro 6900WU. Oh, except that I forgot to mention the rear infrared sensor, which you'll notice is on the top as well for better coverage. Welcome back. I just wanted to say it's hard to find fault with the physical capabilities of of this projector. If I have but one criticism about the hardware, it would be that a second or even third HDMI input would be a plus. Regarding the Epson 6000 lumens, for a little perspective, in a serious home theater with full lighting control, a 600 lumen projector can handle a typical 120 inch diagonal screen at movie theater brightness. We're talking 10 times that, 6,000 lumens with the G6900. As you will see in some of the images here, that's a whole lot of bright. To help out with black level performance, the G6900 has a dynamic iris, but as this projector isn't destined for really dark rooms, black levels aren't really what Epson's after, nor is it a particular strength. All right, let's do more on the features and benefits. Epson has included a number of features that you would expect to find on pure home theater projectors. Ferruja image processing. Ferruja pretty much is the original big name in image processors for higher end home projectors. Epson's super resolution detail enhancement feature works very nicely. It provides additional perceived sharpness that you can see and appreciate. This Epson projector also offers CFI, creative frame interpolation for smooth motion. Lamp life is pretty good. High power projectors usually offer less life than others. While the rating is a basic 2000 hours at full power, that doubles to 4000 hours, which is very respectable in eco mode. Many of you will choose to run the projector in eco mode anyway, because that's all the brightness you'll need, because the lamp will last longer, and because fan noise will be quieter. The Epson has a filter to deal with, but it's really a non-factor as the filter will outlast several lamps. You might have to deal with it once or twice a decade if you're a pretty heavy user. As to the six lens options, few of you will need other than the standard zoom lens, but should you have a need for an unusually long or short throw situation, Epson has the lens selection. Epson's four year parts and labor warranty with four years of replacement program is simply unbeatable in the home projector universe. The best I can tell, unless there's some small ultra high end company out there offering better. The G6900, is reasonably quiet for a 6,000 lumen projector, but that's still a noisy 39 decibels at full power uh, compared to any traditional home theater projector. 31 dB in eco mode is quieter though than many home theater projectors running at full power, including the Epson UBs, so that's pretty good all considered. Few of you are likely to need to run this G6900 at full power anyway, uh, and you know what, even if you are, if you've got friends over watching sports and yakking, nobody's gonna notice. 
Now, if your home has a sophisticated home network, the G6900 will fit right in. It is compatible with several home control systems, such as Crestron's. As part of the G6900's offering of advanced networking and more, there's lots of features there. Hey, you want to help your kids do the homework? Got four kids? Put one kid's stuff in each of the four quadrants of your projector. Or more my kind of thing, you can do a split screen with two high def sources. Uh, my case, that might be NFL football on one screen and my laptop showing all my fantasy football on the other half. Got two sound systems or headphones, football on one half, modern family on the other. Oh, before I forget, the Epson remote control is a nice one with good range and it's got a nice backlight as well. It's similar to many of the pure home theater uh, remote controls in the Epson lineup. I also like Epson's menu system, which has been one of the better ones out there. One G6900 is not a 3D projector. If you want to stack two together though, you can create a 3D system that uses passive glasses rather than the expensive active ones. After all the cool features, it still comes down to picture quality. Color first. The Epson starts out with really good picture and color in several of its modes. For those that want it calibrated or try our settings, it calibrates really nicely with excellent results. Skin tones look great, and I mean really good. The G6900 is a bit forgiving too. Looks good on content that's less than perfect. The photos and the video give you a good idea of what I'm talking about. Sports and regular HDTV have the kind of picture you would expect and hope for. Ultimately, the contrast of 5001 is okay for this projector, but it is nothing to write home about. The iris itself also isn't as smooth as those Epson UB series projectors, and so it is a little bit more noticeable. And theirs are particularly good. I didn't use the iris for any of the sports or for that matter, most HDTV content. Again, if you're using this projector, your room is already compromising the darkest scenes. And that brings up the question of how about movie viewing? Watch movies with a less critical eye, you know, the way most of your friends watch their LCD TVs. If you are really, really serious about the ultimate picture quality for movie viewing, you need to create a proper theater, have dark surfaces and exceptional lighting control. Just remember, in a dedicated theater with lights off, the difference between great blacks and decent blacks is massive. Even a small amount of ambient light, though, wipes out a whole lot of difference in black level performance. For your consideration, here's some examples to give you an idea of how much ambient light the G6900 can really tackle. Unfortunately, we don't have a screen larger than a 100 inch diagonal outside of our theaters. This screen is a 1.1 gain 100 inch, and it's not a screen designed to deal with this type of room. Sorry about that. This quick sequence of photos demonstrates the relative color differences of the different modes, starting with theater, then sRGB, sports, presentation, and dynamic modes. As mentioned earlier, all look very reasonable with only dynamic being off enough, okay, uh, with too much green. And that's typical for most projectors' dynamic modes. The Pro Cinema G6900WU earns one of our hot product awards. It's sort of a first of its breed, a serious commercial projector, not some entry level business portable that's been adapted for the home. The G6900 has been endowed with home projector features and the sheer horsepower to tackle rooms until now considered impossible. Everything else we were able to test performed at least admirably. Uh, note that we do not test networking features, but the projector is compatible, as mentioned, with Crestron and others. The bottom line, I've had a great deal of fun with the Epson G6900. Now, in the living room of our uh, dream home project, which is to say the room used in some of the images here, I'm installing the G6550. That room is a true torture test. The sun gets so bright, it is truly blinding. A combination of direct sunlight plus sunlight reflecting off of the ocean and off of the stone patio. Even sunglasses don't help. When the G6900 was outmatched, even on those small sections of screen materials I was testing, I want you to know that standing where I was taking the pictures from, you could barely see anything. The sun was so bright. So what we have here is a wall melting projector so that you can have a large screen in one of your common rooms. Of course, that room will be common no longer. You may also want to check out what for now are future videos where you will see the 5200 Lumen G6550 installed in that room with a proper screen. I can't think of a better projector uh, to use to watch sports and general HDTV in a room with a dramatic amount of ambient light or intentional room lighting. 
Considering movies were never created to be viewed in bright rooms, the G6900 does well enough. All considered, great color, bright image, lots of features, outstanding warranty, a big wow, period. That's our app. I'm Art Fireman, and this is Projector Reviews TV. Thank you for watching.